powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger and I'm Janelle Slade. Silent and somber moments today as a community and statewide law enforcement remember a fallen officer. More than 1000 people turned out in Bozeman for the funeral of Deputy Jake Almendinger there to pay their respects to the Gallatin County Sheriff's deputy who died in the line of duty last week. That procession arrived at the church this morning and was followed by a memorial service to honor one of Gallatin County's beloved deputies. MTN's Gabby Crivet was at today's memorial to bring us the celebration of his life. Deputy Sheriff Jake Almendinger was honored and remembered today by family, friends, law enforcement, and members of the community. Deputy Almendinger was killed in an accident last week while responding to a call up Ferry Lake Road in Bozeman. Speakers at the funeral service remembered Jake as a kind, gentle soul who loved his wife and three children. He was an amazing father, husband, son, brother. Jake was a blessing to our family. His passion for helping people led him to success as a dispatcher and deputy at the Gallatin County Sheriff's Office. Saturday when he asked Ryan to hop in his rig and head up that mountain, He was doing what he loved. Around 1,200 people from across the county and state attended Deputy Almendinger's service at Journey Church. The auditorium was filled with people mourning the loss of a deputy sheriff that was taken too soon. All members from the Gallatin County Sheriff's Office were invited to attend the service, while other agencies like the Bozeman and Belgrade Police Department and the Montana Highway Patrol covered calls during the funeral. Thank you for all the first responders for their support here today for their willingness to put their lives at risk for all of us. Family members, close friends, and people from the sheriff's office painted a life picture of Deputy Almendinger. Also in attendance was Montana Highway Patrol Trooper Wade Palmer, who was seriously injured on duty earlier this year. May Jake be honored today <laughs> as a man of character and of love and of loyalty. In Bozeman, Gabby Crevett. MTN News. Governor Steve Bullock and Representative Greg Gianforte also attended today's funeral along with other elected officials from across the state. Well, two people are in custody and two people are in the hospital after a shooting in Hardin early this morning. And it may be connected to another shooting incident in Lockwood last night. The Hardin shooting happened in the parking lot of the Love's truck stop near Interstate 90 a little after midnight. A Montana game warden was at the truck stop and helped disarm a person holding a handgun and then gunfire was exchanged. Now, one woman and one man were arrested in Billings this morning, according to Bighorn County Sheriff Lawrence Big Hair. He says two men are in the hospital in connection with the shooting. The game warden was not injured. Now, this could possibly be connected to an incident in Lockwood last night where a person shot at uh, a car near Ford Road near Johnson Lane. Sheriff Mike Lindner says there is enough in the circumstances and descriptions to lead investigators to believe that the Lockwood and Hardin incidents are somehow related. Now, detectives from the sheriff's offices in Yellowstone and Bighorn counties are investigating. Two suspects are facing up to 40 years in prison for allegedly breaking into a North Billings home, threatening to kill one woman, beating another, and stealing about $1,000 in cash and drug paraphernalia. 18-year-old Kaylin Ackerman and 19-year-old Jalen Clark are charged with aggravated burglary and obstructing a peace officer. A 17-year-old boy was also arrested, but charges are unclear. Now, court documents state the three men broke into this home early Thursday morning, threatened to blow one woman's head off, pointed a shotgun at her three-year-old daughter, and beat another woman with their weapons. Now that woman ran out of the house, flagged down a Billings police officer, and all three suspects were arrested just a few blocks away. A shotgun was found in the front yard, and authorities believe two handguns were discarded somewhere in the neighborhood. Well, an agreement has been reached between the Montana DEQ and the Navajo Transitional Energy Company, and that agreement should reopen the Spring Creek mine. Yesterday, hundreds of miners were told to stay home after the DEQ and NTEC failed to reach an agreement on a state operating permit. Spring Creek is one of three mines purchased by NTEC during Cloud Peak Energy's bankruptcy auction. 
Talks have been going on all day and the announcement of that agreement coming down just a few minutes ago. The two sides were at odds regarding sovereign immunity and the impact on state laws and regulations. And onto the weather scene tonight. Q2 Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire joining us because Bob, tomorrow is going to look a whole <laughs> lot different than today. Yeah, and we've been wondering, are we going to get a lot of rain? Are we going to get snow with it? How is this going to play out? Well, here's what we thought we'd show you tonight. Uh, let me show you. As you can see, there's the cold front up there in southern Canada. Had a warm front today sweep through, and boy, that warmed things up very nicely. But overnight, that cold front's going to push on down. You'll notice by 7 a.m., it'll be snowing in the Billings area. A little rain and mixing with snow also in Yellowstone County as well. But then that whole thing continues to blow right on through. And then we think by the time Sunday gets here. Here comes a new ridge of high pressure building in and that should start to clear out the skies, but it's still going to be cold. And as you would expect, our threat board, that's starting to fill up quite a bit. We still have a wind advisory for the Beartooth Foothills until midnight tonight, 60 mile per hour winds. Plus, we also have a, a winter weather advisory for maybe uh, as much as a two to six inches of snow in the Beartooths, four to eight inches in the uh, in the Absarokas, and maybe five to eight inches of snow in the Bighorns. Meanwhile, up across by the Rocky Mountain front, looking for as much as 10 to maybe uh, nine to 10 inches of snow in those areas. So a lot of snow coming up across the region. We'll have more about that coming your way in a few more minutes. All right. Thanks so much, Bob. Well, in Montana's U.S. Senate race, most of the campaign money is flowing to one man, incumbent Republican Steve Daines. So tonight, MTN's Mike Dennison takes a closer look at where that money is coming from. Daines has raised about $5.25 million so far for his re-election campaign and has about 80 times as much money as his nearest Democratic competitors. One of the biggest single chunks of Dane's money is from political action committees, or PACs, almost $2 million, or nearly 40% of his total funds. Most of these PACs represent business interests, although some are for ideological causes. Individual Montana donors account for 15 to 24% of his money, anywhere from $800,000 to $1.25 million. We don't know the precise amount, because about $450,000 of these funds are from small donors who don't have to list their addresses. Most of these are probably from Montana, but definitely not all of them. Danes is getting plenty of money from outside his home state, which is not unusual for a Montana senator. According to our analysis, he has donors from 46 states, and about a million dollars of that money is from five locations, New York, California, Texas, Ohio, and the Washington, D.C. corridor. Two of Danes' potential Democratic challengers, Helena Mayor Wilmot Collins and Loma Rancher John Muse, haven't taken any PAC money. It's also hard to know precisely where their money is coming from because they each have a fair amount from small donations whose address isn't recorded. Most of those are likely from Montana. Collins has raised $173,000 total with donors from 20 states. Muse has raised about $101,000, including an $18,000 loan from himself and donations from 16 states. At least one of Dane's potential rivals is criticizing the senator's reliance on PAC money. But at this point in the money chase, the big difference is the dollar amount. In Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. And a third Democrat in the race, Cora Newman of Bozeman, does not have to file her first fund fundraising report until January. And there is more news from across our state tonight. Two years and millions of dollars later, the reconstruction of a historic Montana landmark finally complete. Join me for the statewide MTN News at 9 on the CW. But first on tonight's 530 News, we are celebrating a decade of courage, dedication and friendship in Q2's Pink Breakfast. We'll take you to the morning's events. And later in sports, Scott will check in with Casey's over in Bozeman where your Eastern AA title is on the line tonight. It's West in Bozeman. We'll be back in just a minute. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.